I used to drink a lot of coffee. If you are anything like me, you love coffee. It has become an entire self-contained culture in the Western world. Think about it. You say to a friend, let's do coffee on Sunday. And beyond the beverage becoming a verb synonymous with friendship and getting together, coffee is a thriving industry worth more than $265 billion per year. Or at least that's what the first website on Google said. It's definitely more than I own. So, how did someone like me, who used to drink 5 to 8 cups of coffee a day, decide to quit coffee? More importantly, how did I stick by this decision and cope with it? So why did I quit caffeine? Now, as I mentioned in the intro, caffeine was quite a large and important part of my life. Something that I used to grab with friends. I'd go grab a cup of coffee with friends and I'd wake up, have a cup of coffee, then have another cup of coffee before I left for work, and then have multiple cups of coffee during the day at work. I realized that coffee was a way for me to get away from work. It wasn't just because I liked the taste, although I do love the taste, but it was a way for me to take a break from work. It came to a sort of tipping point when our power went off for 12 hours here in South Africa, and as it does so frequently here in South Africa. Usually it's only two hours and we call that load shedding, um, but then when it's 12 hours, it's a bit of a frustration. So the power went out for 12 hours and after a few hours I started getting a headache. Now that time we only had an electric stove and I couldn't boil any water anyway and I had no way of boiling water to make some coffee and I was experiencing the beginning of the withdrawals from caffeine. It was at that point that I realized, hold on, this has got to stop. I need to, I need to do something about this. I don't like it when an addiction or something has hold over my life. So I decided that I needed to do something about it. So how did I quit caffeine? I decided to conduct an experiment. I called it a 60-day experiment. And what I did is I performed 30 days of a baseline. So what I did for 30 days is I continued drinking coffee as I usually would. I measured how many cups I was going to drink and I was averaging about 5 to 8 cups of coffee during that time. And then what I did is I measured my sleep, I measured my productivity using an app called Rescue Time, and I yeah, I just tried to gather as much data as possible so I could make an informed decision. I was like, listen, I'm not going to quit caffeine, this thing that I love, unless I can make an informed decision and know that it's actually making a difference or not. So after the 30 days baseline where I was drinking coffee as usual, I had my 30 days of no coffee. Now, incidentally, I actually started my caffeine fast um, on the same day that some of the worst civil unrest ever happened in South Africa since apartheid. So in South Africa's 25 years plus of freedom since apartheid, um, it was the worst civil unrest the country's had. But let's take a moment to, to speak about what was the results that I expected to see. I'd read this book by Dr. Stephen Walker called Why We Sleep, and he spoke, to, he, spoke to, <laughs> he spoke about something called adenosine, which is this little byproduct of your body burning energy, actually, or burning glucose, or using up glucose to power itself. And what happens is, as your body goes about its day-to-day -day functions, the adenosine coats the receptors in the brain, and this actually leads to drowsiness. So the more adenosine there is, the more drowsiness you experience and the more sleepy you, you, you feel. While I was editing this video, I realized that I didn't actually explain the relationship between adenosine and caffeine. I mentioned that adenosine sort of builds up in your body as the day progresses and it contributes to the drowsiness and that sleepiness that you get. What I didn't mention is that caffeine actually creates a covering over the brain's receptors that stops the effects of adenosine. This is problematic for many reasons, but the main reason is that it inhibits your sleep and it stops you from naturally feeling tired when it's time to go to bed. So if you struggle to go to sleep, a good trick to try would be to give up caffeine before 12 o'clock during the day. I mentioned later on in this video that caffeine has a half-life of about 6 to 12 hours, depending on who you speak to. And a half-life means that half of the caffeine is still in your body after that, that time period. 
So if you have a cup of coffee, like I am now, at about 11 in the day, 12 hours later at 11 p.m., half the caffeine can still be in your body, depending on your metabolism and your genetic makeup. It's just something to keep in mind. I want to get back to this cup of coffee. I'm already a really good sleeper. I don't struggle to sleep. I sleep a good seven to nine hours a night comfortably, and I, and I don't battle with that. So what actually happened during that 30 days? I didn't experience, or I couldn't, through the data I was collecting, and I mean, bear in mind, to, to collect accurate data on this, you'd actually have to get someone into a sleep lab, which I do not have access to. I just had my, my fitness watch. And based on the data that I collected, I couldn't see any improvements in the, the sleep that I was getting. My sleep quality, according to my watch and my movements and my heart rate, was still much the same. And the amount and the length of sleep that I was getting was still much the same because it was the same constraints, same bedtime, same wake-up time. Um, and I couldn't see an increase in my productivity. I was measuring my productivity through rescue time, albeit that's a very dodgy metric. So what effects did I see? The first thing that I did see was that I felt sleepy a lot earlier in the night. In fact, as I record this, it's kind of late in the night and I'm feeling a bit sleepy. But I, when I quit coffee, I felt a lot sleepy earlier on in the evening and I found myself wanting to go to sleep earlier on in the evening. And I also felt it felt a lot easier to get to sleep. I, I, I didn't have difficulty getting to sleep. I would often hit the pillow and I'd be out almost instantly. Not that I have much difficulty falling asleep now. So fast forward a bit, where am I now? I have started drinking coffee again, but I didn't ever want to get to that point where I was drinking five to eight cups a day. So I've made a rule for myself. I've said only one rule. But I want to share with you some three three guidelines, let's call them that, that I have used to conduct this experiment and then I'm going to take these three guidelines and apply them to experiments going forward in the future but I want to share them with you because I, I think they made doing this experiment really easy and I think they are a good way of breaking and making a habit. If you want to commit to doing something consistently I think this is a good way to to start doing it and a good way to uh, stop doing something that you want to stop doing frequently. So either making a habit or breaking a bad habit. So the first one is make it an event. So when I quit caffeine, I have an email newsletter and you should definitely sign up to that. The first thing that I did is I announced it to my newsletter. I was like, hey guys, I am thinking of starting this habit and thinking about the habit. You can't just think about doing that habit. You actually have to be intentional about it and want to do it. So on my newsletter, I wrote up how I was going to do it, how I planned to do it, why I was planning on doing it, but I made it an event. I mean, if you were planning a party at your house, you would send out invitations to the guests. And now you kind of held to this agreement that, hey, you have to make this thing happen because the guests expect it to happen. So the same thing happened with this. I sent out my intention to do this experiment to my email newsletter database and said, hey, I'm doing this. And I felt accountable to them because I promised them that I would do it. The other aspect to making it an event is that there is a start date and a end date. Now, you may be thinking, but Ross, I want to do this habit for the foreseeable future. I don't want to just stop after a few days. But I think you should stop after a few days. What I would recommend is give it an expiry date. Say, I'm going to do this thing for 30 days, or I'm going to do this thing for 60 days or 90 days. And the reason I say this, and this goes, I think it's a bit contrary to everything they teach about habits, because most people say it's 21 days, 30 days, 60 days, or whatever it takes to create a habit, but I'm, I'm not really sure of what the number is and if I even believe it. But what giving an expiry date does is it gives you permission to quit the habit if you don't like it or don't see it adding value to your life. You see, if you start a habit and you realize that it's not adding value to your life. You can almost feel guilty about letting go of the habit or not doing the habit or missing days of doing the habit. So by giving an expiry date, you give yourself a date to say, okay, I am going to reassess the things that I've been doing over these past few days and I want to see if it's really been adding value to my life. 
The third thing you want to do is you want to make it measurable. Peter Drucker, one of the greatest business thinkers of the 20th century, said, what you can't measure, you can't manage. And what this really means is that if you can't put a tangible metric to measure your progress to tell whether you are doing well or not, you really can't understand what's what's actually happening you you can't manage the thing that you're trying to do the system the process the task at hand unless you can measure your progress i mean imagine football or soccer you don't know that the team who's winning unless they're scoring goals i mean if you look at the the possession ratios you don't know who's winning the game unless you look at the goals because i mean at the end of the day the only thing that matters in a soccer match is the goals so now that i've outlined my three steps or my three principles for creating or breaking a habit how did i approach coffee after i had um, done this experiment after i had made it an event after i had um, given an expiry date and made it measurable what did i do after that well after i'd done this experiment I sat down and I said, listen, going back to five to eight cups of coffee a day is probably not healthy for me. It may not be having a detrimental effect on my sleep, but when I quit coffee, I actually experienced some really serious side effects. My, I had headaches the first day. I had um, my, my kidneys started hurting. I couldn't jump up and down on day three until six because my kidneys just hurt so much. Even though I was drinking water, and I just didn't want to, I don't want to go down that road again. I didn't want to be in that position again where I was so addicted to coffee that it was, and it actually caused pain to my body. But on the other hand, I really enjoy coffee. I have a lot of friends that are baristas and really enjoy coffee. So I kind of have this conundrum. I, I love the taste of coffee and it's part of how I interact with my friends socially. But then on the other hand, it's really unhealthy. So what did I do? I've limited myself to one cup of coffee a day and i've also bought myself decaf coffee that i can have if i feel like a second cup of coffee the other thing i do is i don't have coffee first thing in the morning because i don't want it to be something that i use to wake myself up i usually have it at about 10 and the reason i chose 10 is because 10 o'clock is late enough in the day that i'm woken up and i realized that i do my best work at about 10 a.m in the morning so I have that caffeine kick from the coffee just before I do my best work and then I still have enough time to get the caffeine out of my system because caffeine has a half-life of 8 to 12 hours I think it is which means 8 to 12 hours after you take it that that caffeine's still going to be in your body so you want to flush it out as quickly as possible so that's what I did I was severely addicted to coffee I quit it for 30 days and then I reassessed afterwards whether I should continue with the habit or not and what things I was going to put into place um, in order to make that habit sustainable. I hope you found this video incredibly helpful. Um, I really enjoyed doing this experiment and I'm definitely going to do more experiments in the future where I apply this framework, so to speak, to other habits that I want to create and break. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this, I'd really encourage you to uh, hit the like button. I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. And you can also subscribe to my newsletter where you'll be the first to hear about more videos like this and other blog posts that I do. Cheers.